Hey there, Google Plus. How you doing for being here today on Good Day, Google Plus? And we've got a lively group for you today. The green room has been very active, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful show for you. I'm happy to be here. For those of you coming over from seeing Mia drive her Tesla, I hope you enjoyed the show there. I was having a great time. Except she kept calling me, and she when I was answering, and I don't know what was going on. She kept saying, Dennis, Dennis, and I, I don't know. So anyway, we're going to move on from that. And uh, I want to introduce everyone that I have in my uh, in my panel today, and we're going to just say hi to them, and then we're going to come back and talk to them about what they do on and off the plus, what they like to do. And uh, for those of you that might have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section, and we will come right back to them. So I'm going to say hi first to Christopher Vogelman, Doctor Christopher Vogelman. So how are you doing today? Doing very well, Chef. This is a great opportunity to finally meet you and the rest of the panel. I don't think I've ever been on a hangout with everyone before. Oh, I'm really happy to have you here. I love your comments. They're so quick and witty, and I've always enjoyed seeing them. I can't keep up with them sometime, answering you're so fast with with the comments. But uh, it was that eighth grade typing class. I really that was my best class in school. <laughs> I love, you know, I, I had it as a freshman in high school, and I'm very thankful. At the time, I'm like, when will I ever use this? I'm not writing papers. Yeah, I was expecting I'd have a secretary once I got rich and famous, and who knew that we'd have personal computers and have to have keyboarding skills. So. <laughs> very good, and I, I won't tell the joke I was just thinking of. Never mind. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's move over and say hi to Captain Kirk Sherrod from Jerk's Corner. And, Hello. Uh, where are you at? In Utah. In Utah, yeah, Murray, Utah. So it's pleasure, good to have you. pleasure to meet you all, and pleasure to be on the show for sure. Absolutely. So, how are things in Utah today? Oh, you know, it's a beautiful day today. Um, here in the desert, it gets kind of hot, but right now it's about seventy degrees. Sun is shining, not a cloud in the sky. Great day to go for a bike ride. Wow, only seventy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're steadily in the nineties every day now in Orlando. I mean, we look at the weather, and you know, forty or fifty percent chance of rain and 90 to 94 in that range every day. It just, that's what we got. <laughs> well, it's a little bit different here. We have a dry heat. Uh, yeah, like, kind of like an oven, right? That's <laughs> right. About 100, some, you know, summer gets hot here. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it's pretty bad here. But right now, I, I was telling people this morning, they think I'm, I'm not quite right, because I said it's really not that bad. You Once you're outside for a little while, it doesn't quite feel as hot, because the humidity hasn't really started yet. I think once the humidity's in full force, then it, they, all bets are off. But for now, it's okay. Yeah. All right, let's move over to my friend Michael Mason. How you doing today, buddy? Hey, Chef. I'm good. Um, as we're talking weather in, in English, it's uh, 22 degrees in sunny Tenerife in Medican, uh, about 71, 72. So it's just nice, just nice and calm and, you know, not too hot. And we've got a nice breeze, which is nice. And, of course, we've got the pool right in, in front of the door if we, we need to dip and cool off. Mm. So do you always have a nice breeze there? Tenerife is an island? Yeah, yeah. There's, it's an archipelago of seven islands, and this is the one in the middle and it's in the we've got the uh, Mount Tady it's called it's the let me think the third highest volcano in the world the highest mountain in Spain and what happens is in the north of the island it's very wet and very humid and in the south very dry so depending on which climate you like you can live in the north or live in the south or if you're rich and famous you can have a property in both and swap between the two depending on what weather you want what climate you want but it's a beautiful place to live cost of living is really cheap the people are friendly it gets much easier when you learn to speak Spanish and, and people make the mistake of thinking that uh, Tenerife is part of Europe technically it isn't um, and we're actually cl we're actually closer to Africa than we are in Europe <laughs> so you have to watch that when you, you're dealing with people doing business and things the the mentality can be very 20th century at times but it's a beautiful place to live it really is so is there a sovereignty for Tenerife or is it their own country or no it's part of Spain and it's controlled by Spanish law it's it's kind of a you find yourself in interesting situations legally sometimes because you'll be looking for um, a European law that covers, I don't know, let's say the export of goods or the import of goods. If I buy something from America, for example, 
I might end up paying sales tax, shipping, and then when it comes here, pay local tax and shipping again, even though the local tax is only 7%. So it's a little frustrating at times when you're dealing with bureaucracy because they don't understand that you've already paid tax on something. So you have to buy the bullet. But typically things, uh, I buy things on the internet and I get them shipped over here. And I always pay less than if I was in the UK or if I was in the States um, because of the euro dollar conversion rate, which helps as well. You know, that helps doing business. But uh, generally, you know, nice place to live, nice and relaxed. You just learn the language and learn the important phrase, manana. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever anybody wants anything done, ah, manana. I, I've learned that phrase in Florida very well. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, we don't do it today. We'll do it tomorrow or the next day, you know. Yeah. Got to love it, man. It's that tropical climate feel, I guess. And then yeah. my, my last guest I have here on the panel is... Sue Aston, and it's so good to see you again today. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to come on the show. And you are going to be uh, breaking some new ground for us today as we yeah. hopefully add a regular segment to our show where we're having some music on. Brilliant. Start a good day, Google Plus. I, I wanted it to be more of a variety show, and it was mm -hmm. it's just been hard finding people to come on and do just a <laughs> dance number, though. So. Is that what you do on a variety show? You dance like this? <laughs> yeah. Dancing, comedy, there's a whole That's host great. of things you can do. It's I, a variety. You know, I have joined more communities trying to get people. Yeah, I, comedy, and they're, they're, they're from far from being very active. So if there's any comedians out there, any dancers, any singers, any other musicians that would like to be on, just let me know. I, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for talent. You know, we'll think of me. Pretty soon I can come out and we can have a really big shoe. Uh, <laughs> I want to do it plate spinning like on the Ed Sullivan show. And to I wonder if Topo Gigi is still alive. That would be great. That would I can be. play the ukulele. That I would be fun. No tiptoe through the tulips, though, right? No, that's that's been done. I got my I got my French horn out of mothballs. <laughs> we don't even want to go there. Never mind. <laughs> so Sue, we're already how, talking about mothballs. Let's get back to Sue. She's already blushing a little. Oh, oh, so exciting! Yes, fine, thank you. In fact, it's tropical here in Cornwall at the moment, and tropical for us. Is like 18 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, it's it's boiling here. It's normally, you know, very rainy and cold. So we're all having a good time. So is that is that not normal for you? Though? Is that warmer than usual? Yeah, that's much much warmer than usual. The the weather's always very mixed here in Cornwall. I think because we're so near to the coast, it can change really quickly. So yeah, yeah it does make it interesting. Yeah, we, we, they told me that when we moved to Florida. said so they have a saying, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like that here. Yeah. But, but you know, it's, uh, it's it's all good. It's all good. We're happy. We're, I still would love to come out and visit you in Cornwall, though. That sounds like a beautiful place. You must. We have the most amazing food, Chef Dennis. You would uh, love it. We yeah, perfect. We teas and all sorts of things. I would love it. I would love it. So we'll, we will get out there, I promise, sooner or later. <laughs> whether it's whether it's with Mia or with my wife, one oh, of the two. We'll be that'd out be great. There. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started now, and uh, we're just going to go back through the panel and talk to uh, each of our guests, and just tell us what you're doing on and off the plus, anything you'd like to promote, anything you'd like to talk about, any projects. You know, just let's get to know you a little better and let our viewers get to know you more as people on the plus and understand, you know, there is more of a persona behind, you know, that icon or your quick typing style. So, Christopher, we're going to come right back to you. <laughs> I, th I thought it was all about the fingers. You know, it is, but that's a whole other show. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, let's see. I've, I've been a chiropractor for 26 years and recently went into sort of deep, deep semi-retirement in order to start a new software and consulting business in gamification, which is a fancy word for behavior modification or guiding behavior through the use of game mechanics, through achievements, points, badges, leaderboards, all these types of things, but basically to guide people's behavior for social good and not for evil. And I'm in the midst of moving, which is why you see boxes behind me, and we have painters upstairs in the condo above, because we're moving up one level. It's leveling up, just like in a game. 
and this time with a great view of the, all the monuments in Washington, D.C. We're going to have the eastern view with the Capitol Dome, the Washington Monument, uh, and the Potomac River, and be able to watch those planes come in and out of National Airport. So it's going to be fun as long as those landing lights don't come straight at us. That's all I'm asking for. I hate when that happens. Yeah, it's, all, it's awful when that happens. I, I lived in a house growing up, and we had a... Uh, FAA training facility behind us, an Air Force base and that, and we were in that landing zone, and the, the plane, we stand at the kitchen sink, and the planes would just be coming right at you, and you just sit there and go, oh my, I hope it keeps going. Well, what, what happens is that because of after 9-11, they have restrictions in D.C. airspace, and so what you have is the planes come down the Potomac, and they wind their way around, and at one point, as they're coming down the Potomac, they head straight for the condo, and the landing lights illuminate the, uh, the condo, and then, at the, then they turn because they're following the river down to land eventually there. So it's a little unnerving at times, but after a while, you get used to it, that, and you have faith that they will eventually turn and not head straight at you. So, so that would be a fun game to play with new guests to your house. Oh, yeah. it's Actually, it, it does unnerve them if they're staying overnight. So. <laughs> But it's 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 a fun place. It's a great great view, and uh, this area is uh, there's always something entertaining and something happening. I mean, although I do spend a lot of time now going back and forth between Silicon Valley and here with my tech team over there in near San Jose, and uh, I refer to myself as getting used to a bi-coastal lifestyle. But I'm actually referring to myself as bi-coastal curious. I got you. That's my I'm answer. glad you said you weren't just getting used to a bi lifestyle. Because no, bi -co bi coastal curious. <laughs> Get that hashtag, Kristen Dresden. Bi coastal curious. Yeah, <laughs> he likes them on both coasts. Okay. So, what what kind of chiropractor did you do? What kind of chiropractic? Uh, you know, a whole range did of bi coastal stuff. chiropractic. <laughs> well, no, not bi coastal chiropractic. Although I have a friend, uh, Monica Klein. She's a, a, a friend of mine who is a nutritionist out in Hollywood, and we used to have a uh, blog talk radio show where we talked about healthcare and nutrition. And we used to do it was called it was Total Health Talk, bi coastal but straight. <laughs> that was. Our, that was our, it's true. It's true. I mean, I, I, you could find all those things in the past, but uh, I did a lot of a wide range of things, from the heavy-handed stuff to very gentle stuff, with like the pressure that you could withstand, like four ounces on your eyeball, that kind of work. So I did a lot of different things. Did some acupuncture, postgraduate school, and then you name it, I've done it. And um, but I did an undergraduate in psychology at Harvard, and then I went to chiropractic, and now I've kind of gone full circle again. I'm going back to my roots in psychology, but this time it's psychology amplified by technology. So now, it's kind of fun. Available in, in, on computers then, or how would we... Yeah, it's going to be computers. I mean, I, I, I'm working on a, a several different levels. My target market pretty much is uh, Fortune 5000 companies. So, you know, the, the platform that we have, it, that we're developing right now, it starts at like $150,000. So it's out of the range of the average small business person, but I'm working out a model where somebody could use the same types of technology in a lighter version, and maybe there'd be a subscription model that might be between three to $500 a month for entrepreneurs who really want to have a lot of stickiness to their websites and be able to, to attract people through engagement keep their undying loyalty and then basically sell them more stuff. Who, who wouldn't so, want that? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, that's so so I want to get eventually to a subscription model, but for the time being I'm mostly focused on healthcare, getting patients to be more compliant uh, with their instructions from their doctors, uh, take their medic medicines, their dosages on time, and uh, of course also just, uh, I've, I've got some weird connections too, which we'll talk about some other time with uh, Elvis Presley's youngest stepbrother, which is to create an engagement for his new series of movies coming out next year called Growing Up Graceland. Wow. Uh, he's, he spent 17 years with Elvis uh, as one of the stepbrothers, but Elvis never called him step anything. So, But we'll get into that in a later time. So, cool. I'm doing hangouts with him too soon, so that'll be fun. Wow. That'll be fun. Yeah. Looking forward to that. And Kirk, you still there? Let's, let's move over to you now. Well, if, if you're hanging out with Elvis, I just want to be there when that happens. Well, no, it's Elvis's youngest stepbrother, not actually Elvis. So. Oh. 
Yeah, if he's with all the stuff you were talking about, all the technology, I thought maybe you'd figured out a way to hang out with Elvis, and I just wanted to be part of that. Well, we 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 can actually probably get the holographic version of Elvis, and you can hang out with him. So, no, Tupac. See, now there you go. Now, did did anybody see the Michael Jackson on the Music Awards? Did anybody see the hologram that they did on there? I, I'm sure I don't know. No, I didn't. See no, that. I that was amazing. If you get a chance to go see that, they did a a song that Michael Jackson had never released, and they did a hologram of him on the show, and it was it was, was kind of scary. That's the next step, I think, is creating those kind of uh, artificial, intelligent, holographic images. Well, that's I mean, that's what I am. I'm an artificial, intelligent hologram right now, and I'm I, not actually here. I'm actually working in the bike shop, but this has been pre-recorded. Pre-recorded. That's I'm, cool. I, I'm working on that. Like, help me, Obi Wan. You're my only hope. Intelligently. Yes. Oh, yes. Of course. Oh, yeah. So, hey, guys, what's going on? Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about your bike shop? I know there's a lot of people maybe have not seen you before, and uh, I think you got a pretty interesting story there. Uh, we just we have a bike shop. We just you know it's just a plain old bike shop. We uh, <laughs> people come in and they bring their bikes in. They'll get worked on and and they buy bikes here and. You know, a bicycle shop is such a neat place. When I was growing up, when I was a kid, it was just a place that I I just had this idea. For some reason, it was just this, maybe, maybe it was a comic book store for everybody else, or maybe it was a video game store for somebody, but for me, it was a bike shop, and it was just the place I could go and disappear from everything else and just, just I don't know, it, it just took me to a different place, and I got so excited when I went there, I wanted to recreate that. So that's a little bit about what we are. Um, we we don't just sell bikes here. I you know was kind of joking about that. We try and create an environment uh, for people to come in here and have an experience, a real, true life experience about buying a bicycle, owning a bicycle, and all the wonderful things that come along with that. Not all of the sad parts and all of the flat tires and all of the mechanical issues, but we try and create that to be a, a great experience for everybody that comes in. And that's a little bit different about us. We, we aren't your average bike shop. We're a little bit different that way. And you also have a kind of a unique program for kids buying bikes too, don't you? We do. It's, it's the kind of program where kids can be on the right bicycle at the right time in their life. I think a lot of parents try and uh, get kids to, to buy a bicycle that's too big. I don't know. My parents used to do this with shoes with me. They used to buy some shoes and they'd buy them a size too big. Oh, he'll grow into them. Well, you know, that's just wrong stuff. You can't, you're not supposed to grow into shoes. You're supposed to wear the right size shoe, and then when you grow out of those and wear them out or, you know, burn them in the fire like I did, you, you, need, to, uh, you need to be in the right shoe. You need to be in the right bicycle, just the right size. Otherwise, you're not happy on it. It's not fitting you. You're not going to be, you're not going to ride it. You're not going to treat it good. So uh, the way it works is if, if you spend money on a bike for a kid in my shop, we give you that same money towards the next bike. So they spend a hundred bucks, we give you a hundred dollars towards the next bike, and we keep doing that until kids are twelve. And that way they're on the right bike and their parents don't have to break the bank to do it. Okay, well that's, that's excellent. Michael has a question for you. Okay. Yeah, um, we've got, this is something that I found really unusual. I purchased a bike uh, months ago and for some strange reason I ended up watching the um, you know how to video and on this video it said take the bicycle seat raise it up stood up if you stood on the floor to um, belt level so to your waist belt you know on your jeans and that's where it should be positioned and I thought okay I'll do that <laughs> and then I got on the bike and I thought this just does not feel comfortable and I had to lower the seat uh, so I could touch the floor and I wasn't leaning over the handlebars. Um, what do you guys do to kind of, you know, find the right seating position um, for, say, a kid or somebody who, who has or somebody like me that hasn't ridden a bike in a long time? Well, unfortunately, what they're trying to do is give you a general idea of where that saddle should be set. Uh, and everybody's different. Everybody has different leg lengths and their upper body's different lengths and the bicycles are different um, heights from the floor and so 
that's just a general rule of thumb, but to be fit on a bike properly, you really need to have somebody that knows what they're doing set you on the bicycle and then set you up properly, whether that means adjusting the seat up or down or forward or backward, adjusting the handlebars. There's so many elements to that that it's it's personal. Yeah. Well, yeah. good. I like your website. I'm looking now. Thank you. I know, uh, you work with Dennis Deuce, I believe. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, he's a good guy for doing hangouts. Very much. Uh, very much so. Yeah. Hey, um, one thing about our kid program is that if you if you bring that bike back, I take that bike back in. This is a direct push against Walmart. <laughs> I'm just trying to get people to get on the bicycle that is correct for them, and not a not a bicycle that's going to break down in two minutes. And and then you, if your if your bike's broken, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be riding that. So the whole idea is to get a kid on the right bicycle that's going to fit them. And even like Michael said, if it doesn't fit you, you're, you're uncomfortable. You're not going to ride it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that is a big point. And then different kinds of bikes for, for adults, anyway, for different kinds of things. They might do like mountain biking or if they're riding over 10 miles. You know, there's, there's other variables uh, that come into play. And you really need someone professional to help you with it. I mean... You're, otherwise, we're just guessing, you know, uh, what what is right, and we don't feel right. My my brother's actually a, a professional bike fitter. That's what he does for a living. His uh, his company is called Precision Bike Fit, and what he does is he takes a machine and he puts you on this computer and sets you up on the bicycle, and then makes sure that your left side and your right side match that bi bike perfectly, because left and right our bodies don't actually match. Um, and so last year I'd been having some calf problems. I was cramping in one calf about 60 miles out. And he said, uh, he said, you've got some issues, but we don't know what they are. We tried nutrition. We tried all these things. I got on his machine and found out that my right femur was about three quarters of an inch longer than my left femur. And so my left calf was compensating for that. So he adjusted the pedals, made some shims and did some stuff on there. And now I don't have those issues. So our bodies aren't the same. They're they're right to left. We're asymmetrical. Yeah, hmm. Christopher knows that because he's a chiropractor. I, I made a good living correcting asymmetries. Yeah, yeah, and it's amazing how how much that will affect your muscles and your lower back and all of those those things. I found now that I've gotten fit on my bike properly, there's some issues in my lower back that have gone away also. And um, my gluteus medius uh, is, has been stretched out a little bit, so I'm, I'm not <laughs> – you know what I'm talking about. Don't you look at me like no, that. <laughs> there's, there's no mooning before noon. No moon before noon, remember. No, there's no, I, would, I didn't moon anybody. I was thinking about it, but I read the comments. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, that's just, it's a great thing to be able to, to learn how to get fit on there. And there's so many fun elements about bicycles. Everybody can enjoy one. That's the great part about it. I think that's the best part about my job is getting everybody on a bicycle that is having fun and enjoying. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, I think another... Go ahead, Michael. Sorry, another, another quick question for you. I, I, I love your website, by the way. love the thank images. You, is it, they're interactive. That's what people want. I'm a web designer, so I, I, I look at things like that. Oh, thank um, you. But I've, I've got a question you're probably going to say no to. Do you ship outside the U.S.? Oh, all the time. I do. Uh, I do so many bicycles to uh, the LDS missionaries, the Mormon missionaries. I sell tons of bikes to them, and they're all over the world. So um, I have done that, yeah, many times. Bookmarked, because we need yeah. a new bicycle. <laughs> oh. Well, we can do that. It'd be better if you came over here and I could fit you on it properly. Oh yeah, that's only about four thousand dollars round trip. Yeah, nah. we'll do that. <laughs> Nothing. You're, you're a rock star. You got that. That's pocket change. <laughs> If you need to come up with a, a software that puts us on a bike that will can make adjustments for us. Have us sit on a bike here that makes it adjust for you so you can tell us what we need to do. It's, it's available. It's actually available. That's what my brother uses. All you have to do is go to a retool fit person, and they can retool you, and then they can send me the data, and I can make all the adjustments over here. Wow. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Gotta love it. Technology. Hey, Christopher, there you go. There's your next thing we can chat about. Well, I, just, I was thinking, yeah, uh, uh, using augmented reality. That would be really interesting. 
Yeah. yeah. The only problem is I, I'm not a Fortune 5000 company yet. You don't. So. You don't have to be Fortune 5000. I'm also looking for entrepreneurs with uh, with lots of ideas. So. Ah. Well, I'm that guy. I've got lots of ideas. They might not be all good ideas, but there are lots of ideas going on. <laughs> it's fine. Well, you gotta leave room. Yeah, idea productivity doesn't mean it means that there are a lot of them, not necessarily good ones. So. Right. I, I still right. haven't heard back from the spam company with all the ideas I sent them, but you know, every now and then something works. Spam, <laughs> like the stuff you eat, kind of. Yeah, spam? I, I gave them a new slogan, and I, and what was the, the slogan? Spam the other pink meat. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> now, granted, the restraining order didn't place that many restrictions on it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny stuff. That's oh, funny. And they God. didn't use it. I'm so surprised. Oh, that and I came up with a line of clothing made out of spam. It was called Spam Decks. You know, was... I like that one. Or you could have cards. You spread decks. it on, or how does that work? Yeah, actually... <laughs> I, I told them they should move their headquarters to Spam Antonio. You know, I, I just I, I was an idea man. I was rolling with it. So. <laughs> rolling in it. <laughs> Pretty much. They all have pictures of you on their dartboards at the office. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? What so anyway, let's move on. And we are in about the middle of the show. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our guest of honor today. And that is Sue Aston. And Sue is going to not only say hi and tell us about what she's doing, but then she's got a little treat for us after that. She's going to play something for us. So how are you doing in Cornwall, and what's up with you? You've got your show scheduled, and I see a family show scheduled. That's right, yes. Quite busy at the moment, to be honest. Um, got a show on Sunday, my own show, um, which is me playing about three of my tracks, and I've got some guests coming on. And I'm also having a little um, rock bun feature as well on my show because I love food. So, um, yes, it's going to be a very varied show. And then I'm doing a um, hangout with Christine de Graff um, next Sunday on my music hangout. Um, and all of us in the family will be playing and doing a family concert. So that's going to be really exciting too. That should be fun. And, and what are the other instruments that will be featured in that family concert? Well, basically, all the men in the house, they all play guitar. <laughs> but different, different styles, though. Dan, um, my older son, who also has his own shows, um, he, he's classically trained, but also really into rock music. So his guitar style is sort of a blend of all those different things. Um, but he's an acoustic songwriter. And my younger son, Lee, is a classical guitarist. And Phil is a heavy metal man. <laughs> I know that. He's got the hair for it, too. I love it. Well, I he just... has. <laughs> he used to have hair like Rod Stewart, but don't tell oh. me. <laughs> I could see him in that 80s glam era. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah, we have photos of it in, in spam decks. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I love it. I love he it. He could be the poster boy for spam. <laughs> Man, I do not want to be that guy. <laughs> uh, well, we'll have to get see if the, the rest of your family wants to do an appearance on my show sometime playing. I would love to have them all. That would be great. I'm sure they'd love to. Yeah. I'll get my, my music up. I am talking to a few other uh, bands coming on soon. We're working on a date. But, you know, you'd think it would be easier to find people that want to come on and play than it would be. So, yeah, you would think so. But anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. We're still working on it. Yeah. So you're going to play something for us today. Tell us what you're going to play. Well, I'm going to play you one of my tracks called Nancy's Garden, which is off my album called Inspirational Journey. And there's also a video to it as well. People can have a look at that. Um, but Nancy's Garden was inspired by a piece of folklore from down here in mystical Cornwall. Um, in Cornwall, there's lots of beautiful coves and they're very unspoilt. And there's a particular cove called Porthguara. And there's a folk tale about um, a young girl called Nancy. And she fell in love with um, this boy called William and they adored each other. But as is quite often the case in these tales, Nancy's father didn't approve, which was very sad. and. Um, forced William to go out to sea to sort of earn his fortune and prove himself worthy. And he was gone for about three years and unfortunately he drowned and didn't come back 
oh, as always happens, it's a tragic tale. But it's called Nancy's Garden because Nancy used to um, pace up and down on the headland um, on a place called Heller's Point. And that was known as Nancy's Garden because she was always there looking out to sea, trying to see if her loved one was coming home. And eventually she went mad, and I think she drowned herself. But they were reunited as spirits. So it's not all bad, is it? <laughs> so that's what my little tune's about. <laughs> so uh, we could use a little more volume on your end, is there? Oh any? yes. I think Phil is sort of um, fiddling with the sound a little bit, aren't you? There we go. That's a little better. Is that a bit better? That's a bit better. Okay. Hey there, guys, that's good. Okay, so uh, I, I hope that it's not a mad song. Then it's not a something that's going to drive. No, it. no, it's very relaxing and okay. it'll it'll chill you out. So we've got a few um, technical things to do sound wise, um, and we I haven't played on anyone else's show before, so this will be um, a challenge to see if we can switch the um, sound settings round. So um, please let us know as it's going if the sound is okay. That's all yeah. right. So oh, I'll just uh, go and get my instrument, as it were. This is groundbreaking for me here. Oh, we're, we're going into a new era. Anytime you're ready, Maestro. I'm just wondering if anybody else has done live music on a hangout. I don't, I don't think I've seen it before. Christine DeGraff has, yeah. Yeah, she does the the uh, band news. They do do the show. Yeah. Here we go. That was amazing. 
It's like well, spine it's chilling. <laughs> There, there, are, there, are, there are children all over the world that are going to want to play that so song and oh. learn how to be that good. That's amazing. Oh, gosh, thank you. Did it sound okay with the, the sound and everything? Oh, it was e exceptional. It was oh, great. Brilliant. Thank you. It, it you almost, never really it, know. It was perfect. It sounded like a, a recording. The, the oh, sound quality gosh. was amazing. It was just like being in a concert hall, and I've been, <laughs> I've been in many concert really? halls. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, it's all due to Phil. He's very oh. techy and he's very good, but um, it's always a challenge because it's such a new platform here on Google+. Plus. There's always something new to do, and you always have to make sure that you've done every single last th thing, so I'm really glad that was okay. <laughs> I just want to know one thing. Do you have some sort of, some sort of cereal, um, like some whimsical flakes that you eat to sound that way? I mean, that was just... <laughs> That was amazing. It just flows out of you. It's so easy. Oh, oh thank you. Me. I drink lots of tea if that helps. Whimsical <laughs> tea. Whimsical tea. <laughs> Do re mi fa sola tea. He's just as quick live as he is with his face. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, here, let me let me pop some uh, some comments up for you. Standing ovation. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Uh, Snowshoe was clapping, by the way. Snowshoe was oh. clapping. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. I know we couldn't hear it. It was silent, but it was, yeah. Silent, oh. silent, silent of the lambs. The <laughs> Hessler and Bloor, awesome as well. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Thank you. <laughs> oh, just some great comments. Rhonda Green. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, You're thank you, Rhonda. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a really... Double wow. Oh, gosh, thank you very much. Jessica. Oh, I love this with you. picture uh, now on these things. It's really, really neat. So exciting to hear Sue Aston live. It's truly a day oh. for like a gift. Oh, that's so kind. Thank you all so much. I'm just relieved the sound was okay. Oh, that was <laughs> superb. It was. Phil needs to take a bow for that. He was. Uh, <laughs> Yay, Phil. <laughs> what is the name of that song again? Oh, it's called Nancy's Garden. Nancy's Garden. Yeah, it's on YouTube if you want to check it out. Oh, I, oh don't worry, it'll be on YouTube in about <laughs> 10 minutes after this hangout's finished. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have quite a few on YouTube, and I think you have some that have quite a lot of views too, don't you? Yeah, I do, especially um, The Homecoming. I think it's had over a million views on YouTube. Wow. So, yeah, I think it, it just somehow went viral. I'm not really sure how. Um, but it was on all sorts of interesting websites. Like, um, I traced it onto an American trucker's website one time. That was quite unusual. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, as long as it wasn't at a truck stop. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a whole other kind of show. Is it really? Well, see, I don't know what that is here in England. I have no idea, so you have to tell me. Keep, keep, keep it that way. <laughs> oh, I think I've seen that. I think oh, it's something. on the inside of the stall. It says, for for good music times, call. call. <laughs> something like that. Oh, dear. Uh, we won't even go there. That's okay. <laughs> so that, that was really amazing, though. I am so happy to have oh. Privilege to have you on and play that for me. Oh, it's really kind of you to ask me to come on. Thank you. Oh, no, not at all. That was wonderful. So now we have one more guest we haven't heard from, and we're going to move over to him. He's been so patient. And Michael Mason, I want to talk to you a little bit about. Uh, you've got some real exciting stuff going on with uh, Plus My Reach, and uh, a lot of us are using it and happy to have it. Now you should all be using it. That's right. <laughs> I agree. Uh, problem we had I mean it just so that it, for the people that don't know me I'm a web developer I never call myself well I do call myself a web designer for people who just to make life easy but I'm actually a web application developer I'll take a concept whatever that might be throw some code at it and make it alive on a website and I've been doing that for about 20 years and um, Laurie, Laurie Lazur came to me, I don't know, a few months ago now, I think it was, and kind of laid down the gauntlet and said, I don't think this can be done. I've asked three development firms if they can do this. And I listened to what she wanted, and I said, nah, it can be done. And she went, are you sure? I said, 
give me 24 hours. 12 hours later, I was producing data. And the only problem was I, I couldn't verify the data. I had no way of verifying the data. And the data I'm talking about is when you have a Google Plus event, how many attend, what their follower count is, giving you a, a total follower count reach of that event, and various other you know pieces of data. So we actually paid to have somebody compile an independent report so we could verify the data. And lo and behold, yeah, we were getting the data. And we're doing much more than that now. We're actually um, tracking posts engagement, videos engagement, uh, events engagement, giving you your top engagers, top engagers by gender, top engagers by follower count, etc., etc. We're, we're doing other things as well, like we've compiled, um, on th well, I think, let me think now, it's the biggest Hangout calendar available, although we don't push it that much because we actually developed it for our use so that we could go out and find out Hangout hosts. Who are they? Where are these people? And we're finding people that are running live events, uh, Hangout on air events, uh, any public Google Plus event. And we've actually got a database now of almost 1,100 hosts and I think 4,500 uh, events. And it's growing every day. It just it automatically just goes out and it finds all these events. Um, but the the bottom line for us is we we just finished a show yesterday evening where we've done six shows or broadcasts I prefer to call them, where we're talking about monetizing Hangouts and the process that people might want to follow if they want to go down the route of monetizing their Hangouts, getting sponsorship or product placement. And as you probably know yourself, Chef, I've looked into this in, in some depth, read all the terms of service, all the legal stuff, as sad as it might be, I'm that sort of person. I have the time and I have the inclination. And curiously, while I was listening, I discovered that I have something in common with Christopher because I actually live on the arrivals path for the airport. And I forget how many years ago it was now, but I went to university and I did a uni uh, psychology degree myself. So Chris has the letters before his name, and I have letters after my name, but I just don't use them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Sue and I are from England. Yay! Yeah, uh, I ended up in Tenerife. The, oh, wow. The, there's an interesting <laughs> story behind that, Sue. I actually oh. originally came here to do a scuba diving course, oh, and I was, uh, I'm was i a qualified dive master. Wow. And I had a choice, Tenerife or Florida. And I came to Tenerife. Two weeks after coming here, I met Sandra. I didn't speak any Spanish. She didn't speak much English. But curiously, we managed to work out that we'd like to go out for a coffee together and get to know each other. Oh. And little by little, you know, I got to learn the language. A few years later, we had a baby. Well, Sandra did the hard work. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm settled here. So the standing joke was my friends in England now, Sue. So, oh. so how's, the, how's the round the world trip going, Mick? Have you left Tenerife yet? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, I think, maybe a week or a fortnight away from buying a round-the-world ticket and just travelling. Oh, my goodness. That I, would have been such a different... Oh, gosh. Yeah, so we've decided, you know, we'll, we'll put the, the, the travelling plans on hold until the children are older and then we'll, oh. we'll go and do our own thing. Oh, I brilliant. Think that might make a beautiful song there, so it's either that oh, or it's yes. a Jimmy Buffett song in the works, one of the two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just to come back to what you were asking there, Chef, you know, Plus My Reach was designed primarily to prov provide people with visibility on their reach for their Hangout events, but we do much more than that now, and <clears throat> we we can't really discuss what we have in development, but watch this space. We have a lot of exciting things coming up, and... Um, Hopefully, I've got a couple of meetings today and tomorrow that will make a big, big change for what we're developing and how we're developing. Um, we've actually put a few things on hold at the moment, and we're reworking some of the the core code. And you know, it actually took, I think, three weeks to do the intro video that's on the home page, because anybody who knows me or knows a developer. Well, no. I came in and I did the intro, and it was very much like this. Good afternoon. My name's Michael Mason, CTO and founder for Plus Five Reach. Uh, spectacular tool. 
and it will help you measure your engagement. And every time, as Lottie kept saying to me, just do it with a bit more enthusiasm. And I said, I, I, I just find it difficult. It's my baby, and I know how good it is. And it's great when I hear other people saying, oh, it's great, and I've done this and I've done that. But I just can't seem to sum up that, that enthusiasm. So I reached out, and Chef, you, you did a, a short intro, didn't you? Aslin, who's watching, Ronnie Binsa. And it was just a, an off-the-cuff idea. I thought, you know what? Why don't we just ask people who are using the system to talk about it? And I'll do a quick intro and a quick outro, and that's it. There, I don't want anything more to do with it, you know. And as Chef knows, and, and Laurie and others know, I actually prefer to introduce the show, mute my microphone, and sit in the background running all the the gadgets and stuff. So being on camera, I don't mind it. It's just sometimes I feel like a rabbit trapped in headlamps. And I'm like, well, what am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you came out of your rabbit hole to do this, then, so because it, it is a really wonderful tool, you know. And I've used it, and it's really been proving itself invaluable with uh, sponsors and potential clients, you know. And I've got people now looking at it, and yeah, and, you know, they want to know more about it, more about the tool, and you know, I think it's going to end up bringing more uh, PR agencies and more companies to Google because. You're showing them a measurable reach, and yeah. they have well, something to engage it on. Well, one of the things that we don't disclose is our client list, and, and I'm not about to, but we do have um, at least one global, global brand using Plus My Reach. We have others interested. And just as you were saying, the PR agencies are all looking at what we're doing now, and when we talk to them tentatively about what we'd like to do, they're very interested, and we... we we have a meeting, I think, next week with a focus group uh, comprised mostly of PR agencies. And it's going to be a blank sheet meeting. What would you like? I can code. We have coders. And I can tell you what the limitations are of um, the various platforms and what information you can get. Um, I've been developing Facebook applications for about 10 years. I've only been developing Google Apps for probably six months, eight months, and look at what we've achieved. And we're only just scratching the surface. Um, you know, because one of the things we find, I think anybody would find frustrating, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whichever platform you use, you can broadcast a message. And like me, I, I'll have different tabs open, one for Facebook, one for Twitter, one for LinkedIn, etc. But then to go in and measure that engagement and then communicate with those people is actually really extremely time consuming. If I send a message out about a particular offer, product or service, or let's look at it the other way. Say somebody uh, makes an offer and I think, wow, I want that and I respond and I don't get any feedback from the brand. It's not because they're ignoring me, it's because they're too busy. So they need a tool that helps them measure that this guy responded, this girl responded, etc. Here are your engagers. These are the people you need to nurture and work with. These are the ones that are advocates for your brand. So I think all social platforms are missing that, to be fair. All of them. I would agree. Absolutely. And here's a, here's a quick Christopher says, spectacular tool. <laughs> I'm hoping he's talking about plus my range there. <laughs> yeah. It's a spectacular tool, and it helps you measure. <laughs> <laughs> really, the videos, the videos I will never make public, Christopher. They oh, are we private. Want to see those. I, no, I need to delete those from YouTube because somebody might hack my YouTube account and gain access to them. <laughs> oh, there we go. But there are many hackers I, out there. No, go ahead. Yeah. I'm, on a mission. I'm on a mission now, an epic mission. <laughs> so, epic quest. <laughs> The, I actually did one and I was just goofing off all the way through the video just messing around and uh, Laurie said to me you know that, that five second section about two minutes in that's really good can you do the entire two minutes like that I said, no I had my personality removed when I started coding 20 years ago sorry <laughs> it just happens well if you ever have to make one again if you get a, a hammer and you hit one of your fingers real hard Okay, and then try and do the announcement. <laughs> I didn't tell you about plus my reach today. It's a really good tool. 
that's, that's great sound advice. Smack your fingers with a hammer. Yeah. You heard Tails. it here first. The chef said it. Smack your fingers with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Tails of an angry coder. <laughs> look at the size of that finger now. <laughs> look at the till. <laughs> Sorry. What? What? <laughs> Computer. Computer. <laughs> Oh, oh god! No, I I actually I get a lot of enjoyment out of what I do with 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 um, not the coding itself. That really drives me nuts. I can be up till two, three, five o'clock in the morning writing some code, but when it does what the customer or I want it to do, and it produces a result, that's my aha moment. That's the moment where I can turn the computer off, go to bed, wake up the next morning, and start playing with it and think, yes, got it. You know, when somebody tells me it's not possible, I just let them ramble on about how difficult it is while I write the code. I think that's what happened with Plus My Reach. Lonnie told me it couldn't be done. <laughs> well, I'm glad she did because we're, we're all the better for it. And I'm, I'm sure you know, it's just been a couple months. I'm, I can't wait to see where it's going to end up because you really have done wonders in a couple months. I'm in this hangout. I was thinking about um, what what Sue did there. Um, obviously, you fed the audio from the violin somehow in, into the hangout because that seriously <laughs> that yeah through osmosis or something. I don't know. That's the one. It's always osmosis. <laughs> yeah, the quality of the sound. I got to listen to about thirty seconds because I handed the headset to my partner and she oh. listened. Oh, really? And I was going to put it. I was going to put it on the speakers. I could not believe the quality of the sound. It was beautiful. It yeah. really was. Thank you, thank you. That's yeah. so beautiful, Phil. He's so technical, and clever, that sort of thing. I, I had no idea it was going to be that crystal clear and have that much tonal quality to oh. it. I was, I was blown away. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And it is the master of the violin too that had a lot to do with that. You oh, can, I think so. Sure. Yeah, I think I think the violinist uh, too. Don't don't take this the wrong way, but I have yeah. a friend whose daughter is first fiddle, and oh, yeah. she's played at Covent Garden and other places. Yeah. Now, even though she's referred to as first fiddle, yeah. if I say to her, "How's the fiddling going?" She, she doesn't, doesn't like, like it. it. She's, no. I'm a violinist. I know. I said, I'm I know it's a funny thing. I'm a bit like that as well. I don't really call it the fiddle, but most people do tend to call it the fiddle. I did have someone ask me, um, "What's the difference between a violin and a fiddle? Is it a different instrument? Does it have an extra string?" And I'd say, "No, it's actually the same." Without it's laughing, same. keeping a, a straight face. <laughs> do you play any other instruments then? Yeah, I play the piano as well because um, I, exactly. I trained at music college, so I had to learn the piano really. Um, I didn't really enjoy it as much. It's not the same as the violin, but um, I do a lot of my composing on the piano. It's very useful yeah. for that. Yeah. Well, but, have you ever played any other stringed instruments? Can you change it? Have you played the cello or? I have tried the cello. Yeah, I have, but um, it's quite a big instrument, and I've got really small hands, so I didn't really get on with it that well. Really, stick to the violin or fiddle. <laughs> Oh, the fiddle, yeah. Very well. well. I remember an episode, you probably guys probably won't remember, but the Beverly Hillbillies, or I think it was, or one of them, and, uh, they, they were talking about this uh, symphony orchestra violinist, and he told them what he made, and then they told him what he could make as a fiddle player on the Grand Ole Opry, so he switched professions. So, oh, really? Because <laughs> the fiddle players were making a lot more in those days. Oh, yes. That's a that's good point. In fact, it's not such a great um, way of earning a living in this country because I used to play in lots of orchestras, professional orchestras, and it, it's really not very well paid at all considering the lifestyle is so hard, there's so much travelling, and quite often you don't make any travelling expenses or anything. It's Sometimes you don't even break even, so I sort of got out of playing in orchestras and thought I'd just do my own thing. Well, you've done very well at it, and we're all the Thank better. Thank you. For it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy. So, guys, uh, we're coming close to the end of the show, so we're going to run through the panel. And uh, if you have anything else you'd like to add in or share with us, now's the time. And so let's go back to Dr. Christopher Vogelman. 
And uh, anything else on plans coming up soon? You have a show coming up, don't you? Or? I, I will have a show coming up, but right now I am guestless. So if anybody out there would like to be a guest on Epic Influencers next week, let me know. I'm still a show without a time slot, so I'm very ooh, flexible. Ooh, me, ooh, me, ooh, me, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> this is like this is like welcome back, Cotter. Yeah. <laughs> I love that show. What was his name? Uh, Horshack. Horshack. Yeah, Horshack. Well, you, you, you seem to remember that very quickly. Horshack. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> oh. send, send me a little private message, and we'll 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 negotiate on things. I've got a couple of people I'm waiting to hear from, but I'm more than willing to 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 consider all comers, so to speak. I got a few dollars. Is it? Is that what I have to do? Yeah, for you? you know, just yeah, a little bit under the table. You know, it's okay. kind of like it's like uh, I used to be married to a Russian woman, and and they talk about in in Moscow, you had it have your roof for your business, which is basically you pay off the local mafia to protect you from somebody else's maybe larger roof. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so I roof. could give you some money, but I might not be on the show because somebody else might pay you some more it money. May outbid you, but you know, I you know, but eventually we'll come to an agreement. So, don't so that was like a roofie or what? Not a roofie, <laughs> but a, they call it the roof. You know, your roof. So, but it's 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 uh, we're doing that, and I've got a development team. I may wind up talking to Michael about some of that uh, development work or so, because I'm always looking for good coders. So, gotta love it. Yep. All right, and Captain Kirk, what do we got planned? Anything coming up late, new or? Um, you know, we do have something coming up that's pretty exciting. Uh, Mia Voss is going to make an appearance here at Jerk's Bike Shop. That'll be in August. She's coming out here to buy a bicycle, and then she's going to, as she says, hashtag pedal her happy ass for charity. <laughs> she does. So, happy ass. <laughs> so we're excited about that, of course, to see Mia and have her come out and have uh, have dinner. And I think, uh, Chef, you're involved with that, so we'll have cool. to chat about how we're going to do that. Absolutely. I think that's uh, one of our food and booze things coming up. Or? It is one of the food and booze. We will be going out to dinner, so that's uh, that's part of that show. So that's an exciting thing. And you know what? This is a cool panel because everybody on here is is passionate about what they do. Look at everybody on here. Everybody, and they're sex successful and happy about what they're doing because they're passionate about it. So whatever you do, do that. That's the key to being happy. <laughs> that's the sauce right there. That's the, that's the roux, isn't it, Chef? That's it. That's it, baby. You gotta love what you do, and you'll always do what you love. Oh, love what you do, and that's the roux. <laughs> that's what and I that's thought you were gonna say. <laughs> don't don't forget to toot the glute. And toot the glute. <laughs> what the toot the glute? <laughs> no, that's me with her. With yeah. Anyway, never mind. We won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> He's just zany. Yeah, it's just zany. All right, Michael Mason. What have we got planned? Any? You have some uh, shows coming up or anything? Um, actually, we've just finished the six shows about monetizing Hangouts, and curiously, not probably, um, we've had a few people go and going through the process, so what's this space for success stories? Um, we're busy working on how to put that together and we'll, we'll have something out there. Um, it's kind of nice to sit back and not have a regular slot now for a while um, because I can focus on the coding on other things and I'd, I have uh, I have my hat is tipped and I have great admiration to people like yourself chef and others that have regular shows always on time always producing the shows but I just don't think I could do it I really don't I wouldn't mind producing shows you know and doing it in the background but uh, to commit to doing regular shows, as Christopher was saying, you know, finding guests is difficult, uh, good ones, I'll say, and finding content is also difficult, and then making it appealing so that it, you know, you can appeal to a wider audience, because it's, I, I personally feel it's, it's actually a difficult thing to do. Some shows just lend themselves to a wider audience. I, I would love to see more of Sue. I've got the video up now for oh. um, Nancy's Garden. I've, I've watched a little bit of it. I'm going Thank to watch you. a little bit more. Oh, oh Nancy, no, it, it is beautiful music. It really is. Oh, it's nice. Thanks. It's, it's nice to see you on the show. And you say you've, you've got your own show as well. 
Yes, um, I do a show about every three or four weeks. Um, I'm quite busy doing gigs, so I try and make it, you know, at least once a month to do a show. And I've got one coming up Sunday at six o'clock UK time. Cool. Uh, something else that, that can be done, and I've tested this, is you record a show and then you create a hangout event. And let's say the hangout event is scheduled for Thursday at eight o'clock. And you're out doing other things at Thursday at 8 o'clock, but it's not a live show. It's a recorded playing. Oh. Providing you can enter the comments into the event stream and respond to people, you would actually be surprised how many people do not realize it is not live. Oh, my goodness. I've never heard of that. That's incredible. <laughs> so I could have a nap and still do a show. Yeah. That sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having I'm a nap right now. You just don't know it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw no the idea. those glasses were on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you weren't snoring. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh. We've, got, we, we've got some good developments coming up in the next few weeks and months. Um, but it's, like I say, it's nice to just be able to now sit down, relax, and start focusing on the core business. Um, and you know anybody out there that needs to know what Plus My Reach does, how we can help you improve your engagement, uh, reach a wider audience, just get in touch, tag me in a post, I'll be more than happy to jump into a hangout and, and talk to you about it. Absolutely, you gotta love okay. these hangouts. I was talking to a PR uh, person this morning and just when I was talking about everything you could do, you could see her eyes just sparkling at the thought you know, of something that she didn't know anything about, so it's, it's yeah. Gotta love it. So, Sue, we have your show coming up. We talked about that. And then we have your family show. And yes, that's right. I'm looking forward to that as well because it'll Thank be you. everyone playing together. And yeah. will you all be playing at the same time? Well, I think Dan and I are going to do a couple of each other's um, Dan songs and my sort of pieces. We're going to play on each other's. Then I think Lee, my son's going to do his first ever little solo. Mm -hmm. um, so he's 15. So um, it'll be a big thing for him to come on and do something. So I hope he does. And Phil's going to join in as well. He's, he's going to be the rock animal. <laughs> Just to balance it all out with his head banging. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> it should be good. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it should be great. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm looking forward to that. And thank, thank you again so much for, for playing live on my show. It, it's a it's pleasure. Work. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you. Well, you know, that's that's what this show's about, and that's when I started it, you know, uh, to, to get this kind of stuff on. So, again, any uh, comedians, musicians, mm -hmm. singers, songwriters, uh, if you have a story to tell, you'd like to tell it on my show, I would love to have you. And uh, it's always a good day on Google Plus when you get to spend it with your friends. What could be better? Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Bye. Bye. Bye.